From CNY Central, this is the CW6 News at 10. Now in enhanced widescreen. We are tracking some shocking breaking news right now. Syracuse police have confirmed they are investigating allegations against Syracuse University assistant basketball coach Bernie Fine. Good evening, I'm Matt Mulcahy. This has all been unfolding within the last two hours or so this evening. Tonight, longtime assistant coach Bernie Fine has now been placed on administrative leave by the university. According to ESPN.com, he's accused of molesting young boys. Here's what we know right now. Police will only confirm to us that they're investigating allegations against Fine, coach Jim Beheim's longtime assistant. They won't say what those allegations are, but it is being reported that Fine may have molested a team ball boy. Here's what the university is saying about this right now. It first heard of these allegations going back to 2005. Tonight, the senior vice president of public affairs at SU, Kevin Quinn, issued this statement saying the university immediately launched its own comprehensive investigation through legal counsel. That nearly four month long investigation included a number of interviews with people the complainant said would support his claims. All of those identified by the complainant denied any knowledge of wrongful conduct by the associate coach, meaning Bernie Fine. That associate coach also vehemently denied the allegations. That was 2005. We asked him the keys. Well, Fine has been the assistant coach for Hall of Fame coach Jim Beheim for Beheim's entire tenure at Syracuse University. He's been at the school for 35 years. Tonight, ESPN is saying Fine started molesting this ball boy in the mid-1980s, and the abuse lasted for more than 12 years. ESPN interviewed the alleged victim who gave details of what he says happened. We want to warn you, this is pretty graphic material. Bernie Fine, according to Bobby Davis, um, grabbed his penis, pulled on his penis, and got him to ejaculate on many occasions. Um, Bobby told me that this happened probably hundreds, if not a thousand times. Now, according to ESPN, the alleged victim says head coach Jim Beheim knew he was traveling on the road and sleeping in Bernie Fine's room. The man says coach Beheim would come in and even see him lying on the bed and scowl. The man says he would arrive to away games a day earlier than Fine's family, his wife and children, and the two would spend the night in a hotel room. Our breaking news coverage continues tonight with Caitlin Newclo. She has the latest live from Marshall Street tonight where students are stunned by this information and how quickly it spread. Caitlin. Yeah, Matt, this breaking news is certainly spreading very quickly <coughs> on the SU Hill tonight, and students uh, shocked and saddened, to say the least, about these allegations. It's really amazing how quickly it spread. Nearly everyone we spoke with shortly after that news broke had already heard about the allegations between word of mouth and social media sites. ESPN broke the news late this evening after a victim came forward claiming he was sexually abused by Fine more than 12 years ago. Fine had been an assistant basketball coach for the last 35 years. Now, right now, Syracuse police are looking into these allegations. SU has also investigated and conducted numerous interviews. Students we spoke with tonight say they hope the investigations are thorough and taken very seriously. The Paterno case just um, came out and all of a sudden SU is involved in a very similar situation. And I'm just wondering, my first reaction, like, did anybody know about this? Like, how long has this been going on? The whole thing with Joe Paterno just happened. They're so close to, to home, too, just being a part of the university. You just never think something like that can happen. I hope it's not true. I hope, you know, something that comes out and it turns out to be just an allegation. But if it is, you can't hold us to any different standard than you hold them. I just hope to God it's not true. I hope so much it's not true. But I, I hope that with the rumors that the investigation is ser taken seriously. Right now, Fine has been placed on administrative leave. According to SU, he has strongly denied these allegations. Reporting live from the SU Hill tonight, I'm Caitlin Newclow. Thank you, Caitlin. Now, just yesterday, Syracuse University Chancellor Nancy Cantor sent an email to faculty, students, and staff with advice on what to do if you see or suspect child abuse. She told everyone to call 911, Child Protective, or the school's Department of Public Safety should such a case arise. Of course, all this comes as scandal is rocking the Penn State football program. An assistant coach there, Jerry Sandusky, is accused of abusing at least eight boys over 15 years. Head coach Joe Paterno was fired after allegations he was told about the abuse and that he didn't do enough to report it.
Well, the Penn State scandal has brought this issue to the forefront as everyone talking, including a potential second victim in the Bernie Fine case. New tonight, Syracuse and the country is talking about this. Our team coverage continues with Lisa Spitz, who's following all this reaction online, Twitter, Facebook, very busy with this it tonight. It is, and Matt, we have this just in. Coach Jim Beheim telling the New York Times that he does not believe these allegations whatsoever. This is just breaking online. His reaction, of course, so many Central New Yorkers are reacting. Let's take a look right now at our Facebook page. People are questioning one thing, the timing of this. Jim saying, I don't believe it. So out of the blue and, you know, talking about with Sandusky and that whole thing at Penn State. So some people are questioning the timing. Other people just saying that it's one thing to have those allegations at Penn State were far removed from that, but to have something obviously here so close is just sh so shocking to, to so many people. Twitter, this is trending right now worldwide. I can tell you on our page, Matt, we have never seen in the history of our tweets something get tweeted this much off a story from our website. Well, we do know that the university has said they investigated this in 2005, mm -hmm. that it went to the Syracuse police, we believe, according to the victim mm -hmm. who talked to ESPN back in 2003. Nothing came of those investigations in terms of any findings. Uh, but we also know that the world has changed in the last two weeks because of the Penn State story right. and Jerry Sandusky and what happened to Coach Paterno. So everything gets framed that way now instead of how it might have been five right. or six years uh, ago. Yes, and, and I have to say on Twitter, for people that are just going, I mean, every little detail, people just tweeting every little thing and every different part of this investigation. I can tell you, I did go to Bernie Fine's home tonight in the DeWitt area and he did not come to the door. Somebody did. They told us to get off the property. We did. He used to have those fashion shows. I know you and I both took yeah, part was, in them. I was them. at his house this summer. Yep, I was at his house uh, a couple years ago taking part in a fashion show and he had them for the Boys and Girls Club. Making, making it even more difficult to yes. hear this news for mm -hmm. people tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, still, uh, the latest is from the Syracuse police and investigations underway. Lisa, yes. thank you. Mm -hmm. We'll get back to reaction as we continue here tonight. The sports world is also reacting tonight. Fine is an established name within the SU program, and he's been at Bayheim's side for his entire run here. Sports director John Evanson joins us now with the latest details on, and the fallout from these allegations. John. That's right, Matt. While these at this point are just allegations, the entire nation is talking about this story tonight for obvious reasons, especially because we were all just trying to process still the Penn State sexual abuse scandal. There is breaking news to talk about on this night. We're going to now, Sportsnet New York was airing the Yukon Huskies game tonight when the news broke. They spent their entire halftime show trying to sort out what few details were known at the time. One of the analysts on the SNY desk was former SU assistant coach Tim Welsh, a guy who worked with Bernie Fine while the alleged sexual abuse would have been going on. Welsh was visibly stunned as he spoke to a live television audience. I've never heard this before, ever, and I don't think anyone around the program, I'm as close to the program as anybody that didn't play there or doesn't work there. Uh, I was just actually up there uh, for four or five days covering a couple of their games, uh, two, their, their last two ball games. Uh, actually, every game Syracuse, every road game that Syracuse played during my three years at Syracuse, my roommate on the road in the hotel was Bernie Fine. Mm. Uh, I've shared over, probably over a at least over a thousand meals with him in my lifetime and uh, you know I was there for the birth of his third child in the hotel in the in the hospital uh, this guy is wow. uh, has an impeccable reputation that's all I can tell you about him and I don't know anything about the, what's been said tonight I can't put my arms around it right now uh, I'm uh, a little shaken myself well, Tim Welsh, as uh, many others are tonight, trying to process what has become just a surreal news story tonight, especially, as mentioned, coming off everything that we've witnessed at Penn State. Matt? Well, thank you, John. Our coverage of these disturbing allegations continues throughout our newscast tonight. Still ahead, we're going to look back at the storied career of Bernie Fine at SU, which may well continue, and we'll be sharing your comments throughout the evening tonight. Now, you can keep track of the latest updates on our website, cnycentral.com. We have several stories and links about the Bernie Fine Syracuse basketball story as it's been breaking throughout the evening tonight. All right, Pete, thank you. We continue to follow developing details this morning as a Syracuse assistant basketball coach is accused of sex abuse.
Right now, longtime assistant Syracuse University assistant coach Bernie Fine is on administrative leave. According to ESPN.com, he's accused of molesting young boys. Here's what we know right now. Police will only confirm to us that they are investigating allegations against Bernie Fine. They won't say what those allegations are, but it's being reported that Fine allegedly molested two teen ball boys. Fine has been a longtime assistant coach for Hall of Fame coach Jim Beheim. He's been at the school for 35 years. ESPN is saying Fine started molesting a ball boy in the mid-1980s, and the abuse lasted for more than 12 years. In an interview with ESPN, 39-year-old Bobby Davis said Fine molested him starting in 1984 and continued until he was 27 years old. Davis said the alleged abuse happened at Fine's home, at Syracuse basketball facilities, and on team road trips, including the 1987 Final Four. Davis's stepbrother, 45-year-old Mike Lang, was also a ball boy and says Fine molested him when he was in elementary school. Listen to this. Probably when I was, um, you know, sixth uh, grade, uh, 11, 10 years old, and uh, he started uh, trying to touch me and things like that, you know, and I, honestly, I don't even remember if I um, thought that was what was supposed to happen, you know. Uh, I know I cringed up and didn't want it to happen, and I was very, you know, like, what's going on, you know, I, I, was, it's just, I, I just remember being disgusted in a sense, you know, but that's when everything, you know, when he started trying to touch me, um, my private. You didn't feel like you were uh, capable of saying anything, you know. He's a god to you, you know, or he can do whatever he wants, but not with me. I, I didn't feel right about it, and I told him that, Bernie, please don't do that to me. Right now, head coach Jim Beheim is throwing his full support behind his longtime assistant coach. Beheim told the New York Times there's absolutely no way he believes any of this could possibly have happened. Issuing this statement saying, quote, this matter was fully investigated by the university in 2005, and it was determined that the allegations were unfounded. I've known Bernie Fine for more than 40 years. I've never seen or witnessed anything to suggest that he would have been involved in any of the activities alleged. Had I seen or suspected anything, I would have taken action. Bernie has my full support. Meanwhile, the senior vice president for public affairs at SU, Kevin Quinn, issued this statement saying, quote, the university immediately launched its own comprehensive investigation through its legal counsel. That nearly four-month-long investigation included a number of interviews with people the complainant said would support his claims. All of those identified by the complainant denied any knowledge of wrongful conduct by the associate coach. The associate coach also vehemently denied the allegations. As you might imagine, this story has been shocking a lot of students up on the SU campus, and it's what everybody's talking about today. Our Lisa Spitz is live at Stella's Diner in Syracuse now with more reaction. Lisa, what are people saying today? Megan, these allegations are what folks are talking about as they have their breakfast this morning at places like Stella's Diner here in Syracuse. They're reading the paper. This, of course, is the front page headline here on the Post Standard. SU bench is fine over abuse claim. I did speak with some folks this morning a short time ago as they were having breakfast, and they told me that they hope that these allegations were really investigated even before they were made public because they said even allegations, even if they're unfounded, can ruin somebody's life. It's not also what people are talking about this morning. It's going to be the big story when people get to work today. The news spread all across Syracuse University in central New York last night. Fine, of course, is a longtime assistant coach at Syracuse University. The two who have accused him are former ball boys now in their 30s and 40s. Last night, I did go to Fine's house. He did not come to the door, but somebody did. They told us to leave, but really, these allegations are just shocking to students and a lot of people we've spoke with. The Paterno case just um, came out, and all of a sudden, SU is involved in a very similar situation and I'm just wondering my first reaction like did anybody know about this like how long has this been going on the whole thing with Joe Paterno just happened this so close to to home to just being a part of the university you just never think something like that can happen I hope it's not true I hope you know something that comes out and it turns out to be just an allegation but if it is you can't hold us to any different standard than you hold them. I just hope to God it's not true. I hope so much it's not true. But I, I hope that with the rumors that the investigation is se taken seriously. 
Again, people I spoke with here this morning really still are just expressing shock over this, just coming off the Penn State sex abuse scandal there. But this is closer to home, and people are still shocked. We'll have reaction throughout the morning. We're live in Syracuse. Meg, back to you. All right, our Lisa Spence live for us there at Stella's Diner with reaction now this morning. Thank you. Well, right now, everyone across the country is talking about this story. It actually became a trending topic on Twitter last night as the story broke, and it continues to be a hot topic this morning. We, of course, will be updating our Twitter account with the latest information as it comes into our newsroom. Of course, all of this comes as the scandal continues to rock the Penn State football program. An assistant coach there, Jerry Sandusky, is accused of abusing at least eight boys over 15 years. Head coach Joe Paterno was fired after allegations, after uh, uh, allegations he reportedly was told about the abuse and didn't do enough to report it. We, of course, will have continuing live team coverage of this developing story throughout our newscast this morning. You can also follow us on Facebook uh, and on Twitter for the latest updates. Back to that. Good evening. I'm Jackie Robinson. Details continue to break tonight into disturbing allegations against Syracuse University assistant basketball coach Bernie Fine. Tonight, he says the sexual abuse accusations against him are patently false. Meanwhile, police are expanding their investigation. Our extensive breaking news of the investigation continues tonight. Matt Mulcahy is live at the Carmelo Anthony Center at Syracuse University with the latest breaking details. Matt. Well, Jackie, this story has developed hour by hour by hour after it first broke last night, just after 7 o'clock. We're here live at the Carmelo K. Anthony Center at Manley Fieldhouse on the Syracuse University campus. The Syracuse University Orange basketball team is practicing inside right now for the first time since these allegations surfaced. Coach Jim Beheim is inside. Bernie Fine is not inside as he has been put on administrative leave. His attorney put out a statement on his behalf late today, and in that, as Jackie just mentioned, Fine said that these allegations are patently false. The statement goes on to say, sadly, we live in an allegation-based society and an internet age where in a matter of minutes, one's lifelong reputation can be severely damaged. I'm confident that as in the past, a review of these allegations will be discredited and will restore my reputation. That's coming from Bernie Fine. And then also a late development today, late in the afternoon, Syracuse police released a statement asking anyone with information about past or even recent sexual abuse cases involving Bernie Fine to contact the Syracuse Police Department. The phone number is 442-5222. This is the first reference to the possibility of recent victims in this investigation. In the statement, officers say the sexual abuse allegations occurred many years ago, but were brought to the department just yesterday. Police say the Syracuse Police Department has a responsibility to thoroughly investigate all of these investigations. Now, the purpose of this investigation is to determine if there had in fact been any sexual abuse in the past and if there are any current victims in this case. Another piece of this story that's developing tonight is from the Onondaga County District Attorney who has raised concerns about the fact that he was not notified about these prior investigations, first by the Syracuse Police and secondly by the University. Jim Kenyon's been following that angle tonight. Jim? Well, Matt, I had a phone conversation with Bill Fitzpatrick today and it was very obvious from my conversation with him. He is is very unhappy with the way these allegations were investigated by both the Syracuse Police Department and Syracuse University and he says it, they apparently have violated a protocol in the way that uh, allegations of this nature are to be investigated. Bernie Fine's main accuser, Bobby Davis, says he went to Syracuse police in 2003 and told them he had been repeatedly molested. But he also says the investigator told him that because the incident supposedly took place as far back as the mid-80s, the statute of limitation had run out and police could do nothing. Davis says he then went to Syracuse University in 05 with the same allegations. SU says it conducted an extensive investigation but could not corroborate the accusations. What concerns District Attorney Bill Fitzpatrick is that in both instances, his office was not notified of violation of protocol. What concerns me about it is why my office wasn't notified. Uh, anytime there's an allegation of sexual abuse, we have protocols that are in place. We have, uh, we've worked for years to put these in place. We have a uh, specially trained abuse persons unit. The DA says that now the police have reopened their investigation, he intends to thoroughly review their findings. But he too feels the passage of time could make prosecution impossible. Admittedly, based on these two individuals, there's nothing that I could do in terms of prosecution uh, because the statute of limitations has run. However, uh, offenders uh, who commit acts of molestation on children don't stop. And we would certainly want to have been involved to see uh, if there were any other people at risk and then to see whether or not these allegations 
District Attorney Fitzpatrick says he owes it to both Bernie Fine, who he says proclaims his innocence, and his accusers to conduct a complete and thorough investigation. And we're, and we're back live here, and I did contact uh, the Syracuse police spokesman, Tom Kellen, Kellen to respond to uh, Fitzpatrick's claim that they may have violated protocol by not notifying his office. Uh, Kellen says that he expects they will respond, but not at this time. And new at 6, we'll get Syracuse University's response to the same claim by uh, Bill Fitzpatrick. One of the concerns certainly raised community-wide and nationally is can there be an impartial investigation here? Uh, the police chief uh, at the time of these original allegations was Dennis Duvall, and right. all American here at Syracuse University, played right there in Manly Fieldhouse when Bayheim was an assistant. Were you able to reach him today? Uh, I did uh, leave uh, messages at his uh, business in Syracuse. He has not responded to me. And, and what about this idea of, of a cover-up? What's the DA saying about that as a possibility at this Well, point? he doesn't feel that, uh, that there's necessarily a cover-up. He just feels that they should have brought his office into it. He is the top uh, law enforcer in Onondaga County and the crimes of this nature require that his office be notified. Uh, he did note today though that uh, that uh, both uh, uh, Bobby Davis and his stepbrother uh, Mike Lang were interviewed by Syracuse police last night so they are back on this case. All right thank you Jim Moore in a little while speaking of Bobby Davis one of the accusers he's been speaking publicly through ESPN doing interviews with Mark Schwartz who is the one who broke this story 39 year old Bobby Davis says the molestation started in 1980 and continued until he was 27 years old. Davis says it happened in Fine's home, at Syracuse University basketball facilities, and on team road trips. 11, 10 years old, and uh, he started uh, trying to touch me and things like that, you know, and I, honestly, I don't even remember if I um, thought that was what was supposed to happen, you know. I know I cringed up and didn't want it to happen, and I was very, you know, like, what's going on, you know, I, I, was, it's just, I, I just remember being disgusted in a sense, you know, but that's when everything, you know, when he started trying to touch me, um, my private. You didn't feel like Davis's stepbrother, 45-year-old Mike Lang, also says Fine molested him while in elementary school. Lang was also a ball boy. He's the second accuser to come forward, which led to this being publicized last night. Now, Davis's former girlfriend, Danielle Roche, is also supporting claims tonight. Roche says she was Davis's girlfriend in high school, worked as a babysitter for the Fine family. She says something seemed unusual about the relationship between Davis and Fine. I could just tell there was a lot of secrets. There was a lot of closed doors. There was a lot of closed blinds in his office. There was a lot of, I need to see him privately. I need you to come in my office. I need you to come downstairs. Now, Roche remains close friends with Bobby Davis, something that investigators will be keeping in mind. Now, head coach Jim Beheim, he has not talked in front of a camera today, although he has done radio interviews, given statements late last night. He has vehemently defended his friend and longtime colleague, Bernie Fine. He says he believes the accuser, Bobby Davis, is coming forward to get money. As for accusations, the Hall of Fame coach walked in on Davis and Fine's room on the road. Beheim says that's just not true. He spoke with radio station TK99 first thing this morning. Uh, I never saw that. I've never been in Bernie Fine's road, room on the road, uh, and I believe uh, I've known Bernie for 50 years, and uh, uh, I don't believe this. Now, Beheim has said that he never witnessed anything he considered wrong. He said if he had, he certainly would have reported it and investigated it. We do have continuing coverage throughout the newscast tonight. Coming up, we're going to talk with reporter Brandon Roth, who's been here on the SU campus throughout the day today, waiting to see who was coming and going, including players who are inside practicing right now. At 5.30, we'll have reactions from fans in the online world, and we'll also be talking to people right here in central New York. This is certainly the buzz of the weekend here. What happened with Bernie Fine, and what will these investigations end up bringing in terms of in terms of results in the end? Jackie, we have a lot more coming up live from the Mellow Center here at SU. Back to you. Thanks, Matt. We'll check in with you later.
We're tracking breaking news tonight. SU assistant basketball coach Bernie Fine has been fired after 36 years of working on the bench right alongside legendary coach Jim Beheim at SU. The school fired Fine as the firestorm of allegations continues. Good evening. I'm Lisa Spitz. I'm Matt Mulcahy. It took 17 words to undo 36 years of hard work. An email from SU spokesman Kevin Quinn announced the firing of the longtime associate head coach to Hall of Fame coach Jim Beheim. The statement says, at the direction of Chancellor Cantor, Bernie Fine's employment with Syracuse University has been terminated, effective immediately. The firing comes after three people, including two former ball boys, accused the coach of sexually molesting them. Now, Syracuse Hall of Famer Jim Beheim was forced to do an about face tonight after new allegations surfaced against his longtime assistant, Bernie Fine, and this evening's firing by Chancellor Nancy Cantor. Here's Beheim's entire statement. It reads, the allegations that have come forth today are disturbing and deeply troubling. I am personally very shocked because I have never witnessed any of the activities that have been alleged. I believe the university took the appropriate step tonight. What is most important is that this matter be fully investigated and that anyone with information be supported to come forward so that the truth can be found. I deeply regret any statements I made that might have inhibited that from occurring or being insensitive to victims of abuse. I went to the fine home on Tiffany Circle in DeWitt this afternoon looking for a comment. No one answered the door. The lights were off inside the home. There was a sign by the door that read, we believe in your innocence. We love you, Bernie. Defense attorneys for Bernie Fine released a statement today saying, quote, Mr. Fine will not comment on newspaper stories beyond his initial statement. Any comment from him would only invite and perpetuate ancient and suspect claims, end quote. Right now, fans are reacting to Fine's firing tonight. Our Chris McGrath talked to people who are watching every step of this investigation play out tonight. Chris is in the Breaking News Center. Chris. Well, Matt, this breaking news spreading quickly, especially at sports bars in the area. Many broadcasting ESPN when the news of Coach Fine's firing first broke. Many fans were in shock at Rosie's Sports Bar in Syracuse's Tipperary Hill. They're trying to digest the news earlier in the day when a third accuser came forward. And ESPN released that shocking audio tape revealing the candid conversation between Fine's wife, Lori, and the first accuser, Bobby Davis. And while many SU fans say they've been skeptical of Davis's claims, they say everything that's happened today has changed their opinion. Yeah, it's crazy. I honestly didn't believe it at first, no. And I can't believe that he's actually fired. It's insane. The important thing is being good to people. And Bernie Fine is, is attacking children and get him out. No, I'm not surprised he was fired, but like, I feel like a lot of crazy stuff is going on with people molesting other people. Like, it's going on everywhere. Now, for SU fans, the attention turns to where this investigation goes from here, how all these players will be affected by this, how the school is perceived, and if head coach Jim Beheim will face any consequences. Lisa? Chris, thank you. The breaking news we've been following all day came as a surprise to many SU students who trickled back onto campus today following the long holiday weekend. Many say they found it troubling that a third victim has come forward and we're shocked to hear about the explicit audio tape between Lori Fine and Bobby Davis. Students who have seen the harsh spotlight shined on Penn State worry that it's only going to get worse on the SU Hill. The firing comes after a disturbing audio tape was aired by ESPN this morning. The tape was from a conversation between the first accuser, Bobby Davis, and Bernie Fine's wife, Lori, that was recorded in 2002. It went into graphic detail about some of the accusations being levied against Coach Fine. ESPN's Outside the Lines has had this recorded phone conversation since 2002 when Bobby Davis said he legally recorded it without Lori Fine's knowledge. I didn't want to see that went on. You know, I know everything that went on with him. Funny his issues. Maybe that he's not aware of, but he has issues. He had to trust somebody he shouldn't have trusted. Yeah. The ESPN report recalls Bobby Davis first staying in the Fines home as a seventh grader. On the recording, Lori Fine is asking whether the contact between her husband and Davis included oral sex. They also talked about a time in the 1990s when a 27-year-old Davis asked Bernie Fine for $5,000 to pay off college loans. When he gave you the money, what did he want for that? He wanted you to grab him or he wanted to do you? He wanted to do me. Oh, 
Well, he wanted me to touch him too. He tried to make me touch him a couple of times and grab my hand and then I'll pull away and then he put me in your bed and then, you know, put me down and I'll try to go away and he put his arm on top of my chest. He goes, you want this money to stay right here, you know. Right, right. He didn't have to see him too because he didn't get his money. He thought he didn't get what he wanted. He didn't get the money. It's about the d***. I know that. So you're, I just telling you for your own good, you're better off with him than you are with him. Right. It's explosive material. At one point, Lori finds as explicitly about her husband feeling like he would not get caught. Quote, he thinks he's above the law. SU responded to the tape as Chancellor Nancy Cantor talked to the entire SU community saying that they did not know about the existence of a tape when the school conducted its own investigation back in 2005. And to watch more of the ESPN Outside the Lines coverage, go to our website, cnycentral.com. And our latest Burning Fine story directs you there. You can also find the entire letter from Chancellor Cantor there as well. Tonight, District Attorney Bill Fitzpatrick is talking about the tape. He says his office got a copy of the audio tape about a week ago from police. After that, he says that's when the Syracuse police chief stopped keeping his office in the loop with the investigation. And here's what Fitzpatrick had to say about today's developments. Quote, I think, number one, it's a validation of what Bobby Davis said. As importantly, it's an appropriate reaction from Syracuse University, end quote. Now, meanwhile, the third accuser also claimed that Coach Fine sexually molested him. Zach Tomaselli says he and his father met Bernie Fine at an autograph session in 2001 when he was 13 and was invited to travel to Pittsburgh to watch the Orange play in Pittsburgh that season. Tomaselli says he spent the night in Fine's hotel room where Fine had him watch pornography and sexually abused him. Uh, I was uh, in the hotel room um, and he was, um, he would put his hand down my shorts um, whenever I was sitting there watching TV uh, and he would basically fondle me uh, four to maybe even five times. Zach Tomaselli's father says his son is lying and never went to Pittsburgh with SU. Zach Tomaselli is also facing several child abuse charges himself in Maine, stemming from an incident at a summer camp where he worked. Reaction is going to continue to pour in from all parts of central New York. I spoke with one man who talks a lot to local sports fans. So Brent Axe joins us now, and, and Brent, you, you heard about the firing this evening. What was, what was your first thought? Were you surprised that this happened so quickly? I honestly wasn't surprised, Matt. I mean, it seemed like it was going this way in some capacity. Maybe not fired this soon, but you just kind of were under the assumption that Bernie Fine wasn't going to coach again. There was just too much going on, too much already out there, and we knew there was more coming. So I wasn't surprised uh, that this went down at all, to be honest. What are you expecting to hear from your listeners on the radio tomorrow about this? What will the reaction be? I think the reaction's going to be what it's been so far. They want to know what else is out there. What don't we know right now? I think that my listeners have been very you know, critical of the media coverage from ESPN and from some national outlets. What do they know? And, you know, now that another thing is kind of, it's, it's been trickling out, Matt. I think the listener is going to be like, okay, well, what do these guys know? Let's get it out there. And I think I, my listeners have been great, Matt, in that they've been very patient in this. It's not forming opinions. It's not jumping mm -hmm. to one side or the other. They've said, let's wait for all the information to come out. But obviously, this was a big piece to come out. So I, it's almost like what's around the corner next. And, and then the bigger question still looming is what's the future for Jim Beheim? Will he survive this? He put out an apology statement crafted by some public relations experts, it would appear tonight. Will he survive? Uh, I think he's going to, but I mean, the way this story goes, man, it's like the Syracuse weather. Wait 10 minutes and something's going to change here. I think the key is if something comes out and he knew of something in terms of Bernie Fine, in terms of what he claims he doesn't know and he has been on record now three times i didn't see anything i didn't know anything even that now infamous statement i'm not joe paterno meaning that he wasn't informed of something and quote unquote covered it up if somebody can come out and substantiate that that's what i think will bring Bayheim down but for now I don't think he's, you know, going to escape some sort of reprimand, some sort of punishment maybe for attacking the alleged accusers, you know, Bobby Davis and, and Mike Lang at this point. But I don't think at this time that Bayheim will lose his job because of what we know to this point. Right now, many of you are commenting on our Facebook page about both the tape and about the firing tonight, also about Coach Jim Bayheim's statement. Someone here saying that they were glad to hear 
from Coach Bayheim. Other people saying it's a good statement and other people wondering if more victims are going to come forward. You can leave your comments on our Facebook page. Now let's take a look at how everything has played out so far in the Bernie Fine investigation. In 2002, the first accuser, Bobby Davis, called Syracuse police and told them he was sexually molested by the SU assistant coach for a span of years. Investigators said the statute of limitations had run out. SU did an investigation and closed it in 2005, finding no evidence that co that could corroborate Davis's claims. Then on Thursday, November 17th, ESPN's Outside the Lines aired an interview with Bobby Davis and a second accuser, Michael Lang, who is Davis's stepbrother. Both were former ball boys at SU. A third witness, Daniel Roach, also spoke to reporters about the alleged incidents as she heard about them. Syracuse police reopened their investigation. SU placed Fine on administrative leave. Fine called those accusations patently false. Then, just a few days ago, on Friday, Syracuse police state troopers and other investigators raided Bernie Fine's home in DeWitt. Crews combed through the woods adjacent to the property. They went through the house. They took out several filing cabinets and other evidence. That brings us to today's developments. A new audio tape this morning, a third accuser, and Bernie Fine being fired by SU tonight. And still ahead tonight, we continue to follow the latest in the Bernie Fine accusations. We'll talk to one prominent Central New York defense attorney about some of the big issues in the case. Plus, how does the team cope with this new development and everything that we've, you know, been sure, hearing about I think, today? Yeah, it remains to be seen. I think it's still very likely that uh, this is one of the very best teams, if not the best team in the country. And lost in it all, the Orange are still undefeated. We'll talk to the voice of the Orange, Matt Park, about how the team will react to Fine's firing. There's no doubt in my mind that if presented with these two victims today, then the statute of limitations had not run. There would be criminal charges against Bernie Fine. Strong words from Onondaga County District Attorney Bill Fitzpatrick. Tonight we have a detailed look inside the Bernie Fine investigation. NBC3 News at 5 starts right now. From CNY Central, this is NBC3 News at 5. An enhanced widescreen. Voted best newscast by the Syracuse Press Club. Good evening, I'm Matt Mulcahy. And I'm Jackie Robinson. District Attorney Bill Fitzpatrick says he can't bring Bernie Fine to justice for two men who say they were abused by the former Syracuse coach. But today, Fitzpatrick stood up for those accusers saying they did the right thing. The two men at the center of the case, Bobby Davis and Mike Lang, say that Fine started molesting them when they were ball boys with the team. Fitzpatrick says their claims are credible, and the only thing stopping prosecution is that too much time has passed. Fitzpatrick talked in depth about the case today, including how he looks at the investigation. Jim Kenyon was at the DA's news conference today. He joins us live from Syracuse University with details on what the DA had to say. Jim? Well, you know, Jackie, the fact that the DA would find that uh, because of the statute of limitations, they could not prosecute Bernie Fine over these uh, sexual abuse allegations. It really comes as no surprise. We've been reporting this since day one. But uh, as you heard, the DA uh, did say that had uh, the accuser here, Bobby Davis, come to him earlier, Bernie Fine would have been arrested and put on trial. Crises have a tendency to... With media from across the country in attendance, District Attorney Bill Fitzpatrick says he was fulfilling a promise to report to the community about his investigation into Bernie Fine. But for the obvious problem of the statute of limitations, their allegations would have resulted in the arrest of Bernie Fine. Fitzpatrick said when ESPN reported the former ball boys, Bobby Davis and Mike Lang, alleged that former coach Bernie Fine had abused them in the mid-80s. As prosecutors, the DA's office had to get answers to three questions. Question one, were Davis and Lang truthful? After interviewing them, looking for physical evidence, corroboration, and especially after listening to the infamous recording of a phone conversation between Davis and Bernie Fine's wife, Lori, the DA found... On almost every single criteria, Bobby Davis came out as a credible person. Question two, are there other victims? Zach Tomaselli came forward recently claiming that he had been abused by Fine in 2002. But Fitzpatrick found that his story did not add up, and by law, he will hand over evidence on Tomaselli that could help Bernie Fine's defense. 
I have and will be providing Bernie Fine's defense counsel with records we have obtained. The DA said he looked into reports of a fourth victim reported by the New York Daily News, an unidentified man doing a life sentence as a persistent felon. There simply is no victim number four. Question three. How were the investigations by the Syracuse Police Department and Syracuse University handled? Fitzpatrick again criticized Syracuse police for not cooperating with his investigation, but he found that there was no evidence they purposefully buried Bobby Davis's complaint to them in 2002. The DA was critical of the investigation launched by Syracuse University in 2005 when it commissioned the law firm of Bond, Shenick and King to investigate Bobby Davis's allegations. The DA said the law firm was not equipped to investigate child abuse allegations and failed to report anything to the DA's office. But Fitzpatrick stopped short of accusing SU of an institutional failure. Did you feel that they had an obligation to contact you? Well, there's a legal obligation, no. Uh, did they have a common sense obligation, a professional obligation? Absolutely. Why wouldn't you? So Would, it, you isn't know? that an institutional failure? I think it. Uh, I think it's a, a failure in trusting the report. I, I don't. I don't know that it's a, a quote institutional failure. I wouldn't go that far. Now, the uh, Bond, Schenick and King law firm has deferred comment to Syracuse University. They have not yet uh, commented uh, to us, but Chancellor uh, Nancy Cantor has said in the past that uh, when Bobby Davis came to them in 2005, he told them they had gone to the police three years earlier, so they naturally assumed that the district attorney's office had been clued in. Reporting live from the uh, Carmelo Anthony Center, I'm Jim Kenyon. Throughout the scandal, there have been calls for Chancellor Cantor and head coach Jim Beheim to resign. Fitzpatrick disagrees, saying Bernie Fine has caused enough pain. He says Beheim did the right thing by apologizing for his original harsh comments. Fitzpatrick says Beheim and Cantor both trusted a friend and trusted the school's investigation that came up empty. Well, a critical figure in the Bernie Fine case as it has unfolded over the last three weeks has been that third accuser, Zach Tomaselli. It was his statement to police that provided the foundation for the search of Bernie Fine's home, office, locker, and safe deposit boxes. The DA did not offer Tomaselli that same stamp of credibility as he did with those first two victims. Zach Tomaselli has claimed at Bernie Fine's invitation he took a bus ride to Pittsburgh in January of 2002 to watch a Syracuse-Pittsburgh game. That's where Tomaselli says he was molested by Fine. The DA now says he's handing over evidence to the U.S. attorney that proves Tomaselli's story does not hold up. I have and will be providing Bernie Fine's defense counsel with records we have obtained from Syracuse University regarding the team's travel arrangements for that particular game, which consisted of traveling from Tennessee to Pittsburgh. We will also be providing defense counsel with hotel records, which we have obtained in the course of our investigation. And finally, and most importantly, we will be providing defense counsel with school records from the Copenhagen School District relating to Mr. Tomaselli's attendance on the days in question. Tomaselli's father has said Zach was in school that day and never made a trip to Pittsburgh. What about Zach Tomaselli, this third victim? You talked about the school records. Do the attendance records show he was in school that day? I have to turn over exculpatory material, material that tends to indicate either that the, the uh, uh, accuser is not telling the truth or that there is something beneficial to the defense. Uh, I don't turn over things that uh, uh, other than that. And, and, and I have turned those over to defense counsel. Does it any, show he didn't travel with the team? Any of those questions should be referred to the United States Attorney. They're the one that used him to get a search warrant. You don't give him credibility, though. Anybody else? We have not been able to reach Tomaselli so far this afternoon. The DA revealed Tomaselli called them to make his case. The DA's investigators had already found independent evidence that's now being turned over to the U.S. Attorney. Now, Bernie Fine's lawyers released a statement late in the day saying it appears now that there is proof that Zach Tomaselli fabricated this allegation. The incredible damage that Tomaselli has inflicted on Mr. Fine cannot be overstated. We are hopeful that federal authorities will soon come to the same conclusion regarding Tomaselli's lack of credibility. Many of you were commenting on our Facebook page during the news conference and after it. Our Facebook fan of the day, Lucille Benjamin, says, quote, 
My hat is off to the DA. Now, as for Mr. and Mrs. Fine, I cannot believe that they will not serve any jail time for what they did to these kids. I am so sick of this law that runs out. It should never run out, end quote. To join the conversation, like our Facebook page and leave a comment. In the interest of full disclosure tonight, Bond Shenikin King has provided legal counsel to Barrington Syracuse, LLC, owner and operator of CNY Central, its station and its website. Additionally, our anchor, Jackie Robinson's husband, is an attorney with Bond Shenikin King. They are the ones who authored that report for Syracuse University. Our coverage of the latest developments in the Bernie Fine investigation continues throughout the newscast tonight. Coming up at 5.30, Michael Benny takes a look at how the allegations have impacted the community, plus what the NCAA may do in reaction to the scandal here and at Penn State.